Hi, this is Johnny from ultimatepapermache.com and today we're making a little hummingbird Christmas tree ornament. I tried to make this really simple so that you can make 30 or 40 of them if you wanted to. The first thing that I did was to draw out uh, the pieces of a pattern. You can use this pattern if you want to. It's on my website at ultimatepapermache.com. I'll put a link to it down below. Then I cut out the pieces and I traced around them on a piece of heavy brown paper, like the kind that uh, paper bags are made out of. I made a lot of them just in case I uh, actually have room for a tree, which I don't actually this year. I cut out enough pieces to make six hummingbirds and then I cut a little piece of uh, very light wire. This is 22 gauge uh, galvanized steel wire and I cut that so that it's just long enough to go from the beak uh, all the way up across the top of the head, make a little loop so that you'll have something to actually tie a string or a hanger to, and then down to the end of the tail. I taped it onto the back of the hummingbird with the beak uh, hanging out in front, of course, and then I made a very small ball of aluminum foil, um, just, just the right size for the head, and when that was done, I made a larger piece to go on the side uh, to make the body. I rather loosely taped the two pieces on there. Since we're using aluminum foil, we don't need to get really carried away with the tape because it doesn't uh, lose its shape the way crumpled paper would. And then I just turned them over and made two more pieces, one for the head and one for the body, so that we have a full hummingbird. Looks something like this now. And now what we need are wings. Um, in order to get those on, uh, we want to turn him over onto his uh, so that we can see his back, and very lightly tape the pieces on so that we can uh, pretty much see that we like where they are, and then go ahead and tape them on a little bit more sturdily. Now we just need to make some uh, coils of aluminum foil to make some bones for the wings. Uh, they just have to be long enough so that they go from the body to the tip of the wing, and they're going to be taped on the underside of the wing. This will give it a better shape and it's going to reinforce the wing too. I got a little bit sloppy when I was taping uh, the bones on one of the wings, so I had to recut the scallops. So you probably want to be a little bit more careful. I did a little bit better job on the second one. It's going to be all covered up with uh, paper mache clay, so it really doesn't matter all that much. But um, I wanted to, since I went to all that trouble to cut those scallops, I decided I, I'd better uh, try to save them if I could. Now the only thing left is to add the tail. Um, I cut the tail out of the um, brown paper from the paper sack and I should have used light cardboard and I'll show you why a little bit later. You might want to go ahead um, and take that advice before you cut all the pieces out. It doesn't matter really, it, it, it still worked, but it would have been a lot easier if the tail had been made out of heavier stock. Now I'm almost ready to start adding the um, paper mache clay. I just have to go mix some up. You can find the recipe for the paper mache clay on my uh, on my website, ultimatepapermache.com. There's a link to it at the top of every post. Um, I have a tendency lately to add about a quarter of a cup of wet uh, low fire pottery clay just because I happen to have some around. I like the way it makes it feel, but it's totally not necessary. But if you're wondering why my clay is a little bit gray instead of white, that's why. Go ahead and put a really thin layer of paper mache clay over the wings and the body. Um, do a little bit of a time if, if you can because you're going to need a little bit of detailing. I hurried through this because I was hoping to be able to make a project that um, was fast enough so that if you wanted to make 30 or 40 of them you could. But if you're only making a few, um, you can make much better details if you dampen the knife just a little bit um, because it'll get much nicer, uh, cleaner lines. A little bit of the paper mache is going to just naturally stick out over the end of your feathers, making a really, really thin line. And I just went ahead and uh, went back over that and removed the excess and uh, used the knife to um, redefine those scallops along the edges of the wings. Because I used the, the light paper, I only put clay on the bottom of the, of the uh, tail the first time because it was too flimsy. Uh, there's no reinforcement like the wings have, so I had to do just the bottom, and then I let it dry and I went back over and did the top. 
if you use uh, like cardboard, like from a um, like a cardboard um, uh, cereal box or something, then you wouldn't need to do that. You could do it all at once. I went ahead and let my uh, hummingbird dry. I had it all covered uh, all the way through the top of the, the head and the beak and, and the wings. And I left the top of the tail to dry. Then I put it in an oven at about 250 degrees for maybe half an hour, no more than that. And that made it dry enough so that I could go back and finish the tail. After that, it needs obviously to be dried completely before you can go ahead and finish it up. When the paper mache clay is completely dry, you can go ahead and sand it if you want to. I decided to skip that part. Um, I made some homemade gesso just to make it a little bit smoother. This is just a joint compound thinned out with a little bit of Elmer's glue all. And, and this, of course, has to dry before you can go on to paint. I used acrylic paint and I uh, looked at a photograph of a ruby-throated hummingbird for kind of the color ideas. Um, wasn't being real picky about it, but I think it came out okay. Again, um, it's, it's not a piece of art or anything because I was trying to make it quickly, um, but you certainly could if you happen to be giving this to someone who really likes hummingbirds. You want to be much more careful and get those colors the way they should be. And then I wanted uh, a little bit of iridescence because hummingbirds without it just seemed kind of silly. Uh, metallic paint would have been perfect, but I didn't have any. So I used some metallic wax that I had on hand probably for three or four years. I have no idea where I got these, um, but it seemed to work okay. I still think though that metallic paint probably would have worked better. So he's all done. Uh, it took a few hours and I think he's kind of fun. I could have done a whole lot of them if I'd really been in the mood and if my house was big enough for a Christmas tree. Um, if you make one, please come over and show him off at ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there. Bye-bye.